Hello and welcome everybody, this is Roland Hartman from GraphicInMotion.com and I'm back with another Stardust tutorial for Superluminal TV. In this tutorial we will create this nice Christmas holiday scene here and we will focus on the new features of Stardust. Now we are able to use 3D objects as particles and this is pretty exciting. You can create awesome stuff with it and in this tutorial we will focus on these particle trails here and you see that these are actually made out of 3D elements. So if you do not have Stardust yet, then I would recommend that you jump over to their website, which is www.superluminal.tv and there you can get Stardust and you can also get a free trial version to follow along our tutorial. In After Effects, we first of all create a new composition and we call this our main composition and I will use the HDTV 1080-25 preset and I will make sure that our duration is set to 10 seconds. And now I want to create a new layer, so press Ctrl and Y and call this Stardust. And I will apply the Stardust effect to this layer. And let's dock our node system here to our composition window, like so. And you see we have a few particles that are emitting now. So first of all, I want to create this spiral animation and therefore I need two null objects. So let's create a new null object. Let's make this 3D and let's create a duplicate. The first one I want to call center and the second one I want to call emitter position. And I want these two look a little bit different so let's just change this a bit just that we know which one is which and let's scale this down a bit and just for now I will hide my stardust layer so that we can see these nulls here so I have two 3d nulls here now first of all I want to parent my emitter position to my center null and now let's reveal the position properties and let's create a quick animation. So in the end of our animation, I want this null to be exactly at the same position as it is now. So I set a keyframe on the last frame of our composition. Now I will move it back in space for 3800 pixels. And now these two just travel at our camera position. Now I want to add some rotation here, so let's select the center null and press R to reveal the rotation properties. Set a keyframe on the first frame, move down to the end of our composition and set the set rotation to seven rotations. Now you see it is rotating. And now we want to offset our emitter position a bit, so let's press P. And let's offset it maybe in the beginning something like minus 200 should be fine. Let's set a keyframe here, move down to the end and let's drag this out a bit. So maybe something like minus, I don't know, 800 or 750 or something. And you see now we have this nice spiral animation, which is getting bigger throughout the animation. Now let's create a new camera that travels with this animation. And I will make a one noted camera here and I will make a 28 millimeter slightly wide angle camera and I want to create a quick animation here as well. So in the end of our animation I want this to be more or less like so. Maybe I bring it in a little bit closer. So let's say minus 1000 should be a good position. Let's set a keyframe here and in the beginning now I want to add 3800 pixels to this value. So a little bit of mathematics minus 1000 plus 3800 is 2800 because then the camera and our animation will travel at exactly the same speed and the distance between these two will always be the same. So if we take a look here at the top then you see a little bit better what is going on. They are just traveling around or along the set axes. Okay, so far so good. Now let's take a look how we can link our emitter to this null here. 
if we take a look at the emitter node you see we have these two position values so first of all we have the origin and and set and this is pretty easy to link so let's choose our emitter position press p now in the origin set here press alt and click this stopwatch to create an expression now you can use the pick tool to just drag it exactly on this set axis here and now nothing is happening and this is because we do not have the right values here you see that these values show the position of this null in relation to our center null because this is parented but i actually want the real position in our world here to be shown and therefore i have to use a little expression so let's press alt and click the stopwatch on our emitter position and now let's type in the expression to world and the w needs to be a capital letter now parentheses and now let's type in anchor and point and the point also needs to be a capital and now let's close this and let's take a look whether this worked and you see it actually worked now at least it is uh, traveling the emitter is traveling on the set axis now let's link the origin xy so alt click and now with the pick whip tool just drag on the position here and now it should work and you see now our emitter is nicely following along our notes perfect now let's go back to our main view let's hide these nulls because I do not need to see them and I can also drag them down here so that they are out of the way so this is our basic animation and now we can start the fun part and we can create some awesome particles here first of all let me change a few settings in the emitter I want to emit a bit more particles here so around 600 per second I want them to travel with a speed of 130 and a variation of 50 and I do not want them to spread through the whole animation by the way let me increase the lifespan to about eight seconds here I want them to slow down after a short amount of time and I can do this by using the speed over life graph so let's take this here and bring it in front here to a value of about life something like seven or something like that and the the value should be about 40, uh, 54 or something like that. It doesn't have to be precise, just approximately. So let's take a look what this does. Now you see after a short amount of time, they're more or less freezing. They are, they are still moving a bit, but not that much anymore. And this is quite cool. And I also want these particles to shrink over life. So let's go to the particles tab here and open up over life and size. And now we will use a preset and we can use maybe we can let me take a look maybe this one here apply so that they shrink down over life this is good but I will make it a little bit smoother the curve here something like that and I do not want them to disappear I just want them to get a bit smaller over life So something like that looks good. Okay, now let's create a few 3D particles. To create 3D particles, first of all, I need a model. And you see we have this new node here, and this is called the model node. And if I link this up now, you see that exactly nothing is happening. And this is because I have to change the particle type from circle to model. And now you see we have small cubes and to really see these cubes I will add a light otherwise you cannot really see the 3d extrusion here so let's add a parallel light let's set this to 100 intensity and uh, color off yeah you can make this a bit orange just a bit tiny bit like so and now they disappear and this is because the fall off is too small so we need to increase the fall off here quite a bit now you see we get the light back so maybe something like 2850 is good and now let's go back to our model 
Now we can specify the source and we do not want to use a file. You could use OBJ files. We want to use a primitive in our case and I want to use a sphere. And now let's change the size of the th sphere and I can do this here. You see we have this size here so I can just type in here maybe, I don't know, 5 or this is yeah, not too bad. But you see we are creating too many spheres and I do not want to change the emitter amount. I want to change the birth chance and this is a value where you can choose how big the chance is that this particle node creates a particle on the emitter and if I turn this down to two you see that we have uh, less particles and this is exactly what I want. And if they are overlapping then you can try to shift the seed a bit maybe to get something where they are not overlapping so much. You, you will not get rid of any overlapping but it doesn't really matter. Just something that looks a little bit nicer maybe. This was not too bad. I like this one. Okay. Now you know how you can create 3D models on your particles and now let's take a look how we can create materials for this and therefore we have this material node and let's link this up here and this is really cool. Inside this material node now we can specify diffuse, gas, reflection, bump and so on. So let's take the diffuse first of all and if we want to change the color and if we do this you see by default nothing is happening and this is because it is set to color from particle which is also pretty cool because if we leave this and if we go to our particle node and for example if we choose instead of solid color a random from gradient now and quickly select one of the presets here you see that now we can colorize these using the the tools that we have inside the particle node but in my case I do not want to use the color from the particles in my case I want to use a texture and therefore I can turn this off by lowering color from particle to zero and now this takes over the control but I actually do not want to use a simple color I want to create a texture to create a texture we need to create a new composition and I call this diffuse because this will be our diffuse texture and I want to make the size to 1024 times 512 and this is because these are spherical shapes and I want to project this diffuse texture around the, the sphere. So this is why I chose this special size of the composition. So now let's create a new layer and let's call this color and this will be the layer that will determine the background color of our spheres and I will just use a fill effect to add the color to our layer because then I can change it very fast. So let's choose something like a nice red here. And now I want to apply a few stars because this is a Christmas ball and Christmas balls often have stars on them. So make sure nothing is selected. Select the star tool up here and let's start by create some stars and this, uh, we can take the color maybe something like maybe that they look a little bit goldish later on. So let's choose something like this and let's just randomly create stars okay now let's go to our main composition and let's drag in our diffuse composition make it invisible choose our material and apply this as the diffuse texture and now you see our Christmas balls have nice stars. Now we can move on to the gloss setting. Uh, the gloss setting, if you change this, so if I increase the value, you see that this specular highlight gets more intense but also smaller. And if we reduce this, then it gets more smooth and nearly disappears. By the way, if you use a class texture, you can specify which areas of your object are glossy and which are not. So you can use a gray value textures here to, to specify this. We will take a look at this in a moment. 
For now, let's open up the reflection and let's increase the reflection. And you see, if I increase the reflection to 100, nearly everything disappears. And this is because we have no texture specified that is reflected. And if I would now add a reflection here, this would not have the effect that you probably uh, that you expect. You have to add an environment texture and you can add the environment texture, so the environment that will be reflected right here in the main settings of Stardust under render settings. Under render settings we have this environment tab here and you see here you can specify an environment layer. Let me quickly import an environment. If you want to have these assets, you can download the project that I showed you in the beginning uh, from the Superluminal website. So there you can get the whole project with all these assets. Let's take the BG Blurred PNG and let's drag it on the composition icon to create a new composition. And this will be our background now, or our environment layer, I should say. So let's drag this in on the bottom of our comp, make it invisible, and in the Stardust render settings now specify this as our environment layer and you see immediately we get back our spheres because they are now reflecting our environment. But you also see that we have this strange little bit of white looking um, edge here and this is because we use a very bright reflection environment. So let's create a background here for now. Therefore I will just create a new solid, a visible background this will have no effect on our reflection this will just be visible in the background of our scene and i will apply a gradient here a gradient ramp and i just will add a quick ramp here and let's choose a dark red in the middle and let's choose an even darker red as the outer color just to have a nice background here and this is not right i want this to be radial okay yeah this is what i want this looks good now you see still we have this white outline here and to get rid of this you can go to your texture and you can colorize this a bit by using a tint so in my case the whole environment is red so i will tint this to a bit of a red color, something like this maybe. Let's take a look here. And now you see immediately, first of all, of course the tint of the whole thing is a bit red because it's reflecting the red environment, but you see that this edge now disappeared and, and this is nice. So let's improve this material a bit. Let's change the gloss amount a bit. It's too glossy maybe something like, and maybe reduce the amount of reflection a bit like so. Now it looks pretty nice. Let's take a look what happens if we apply a texture to our reflection map. Therefore, we will create a new composition and this will be my reflection texture. So reflection, the size is not that important. I will make it 1024 by 1024 um, square composition. And now we will create a new layer and this layer I will apply a fill effect on this one and I will make this a gray value of 50. Now I will duplicate this layer and I will change the color here to something brighter like so and I will use the Venetian blinds here to create some stripes. And I want the width of these a bit bigger, so I increase this, maybe 120. And now let's increase the size like so. And let's take a look what this does. So let's go to the main composition and let's drag in our reflection texture, make it invisible. And inside our material node, I will now apply this to the reflection channel. So let's do this and let's see what this does. And now we have these nice looking stripes here and you see wherever the color is bright, we get the reflection and wherever it's dark, the reflection will be less intense. And so you can create pretty cool effects and you can create pretty, pretty cool materials. We could of course now apply the same texture to our 
glass node. So let's do that. And then you see we also get rid of this glossiness on our stripes. Looks not too bad. So now we can maybe increase this even a bit like so. And like so and create an interesting material for our Christmas balls. If we change the direction here, like nine degrees, make this even a bit bigger, like so, and we go to our main. Now you see that we have this kind of uh, material, which is, looks also pretty nice. So I think I will leave that, but actually I will delete it from the gloss channel because I think it looks better if this is glossy overall. Let's reduce this a bit. like so. This looks really nice. Now let's give our particles some random rotation. Therefore I go to the particle node and inside the rotation properties I want to add an angle here or a random angle of 100 and then we can add a little bit of motion here so that they are actually rotating a bit. So if we take a look a quick RAM preview now you see that these pop up immediately, which I actually do not want. So I want these to, to nicely fade in and therefore I can just create in my over size or over life size here. I can create a small fade up here. Something like that. Let's take a look now. And this looks way nicer now. Okay, perfect. So this looks nice. Let's increase the intensity of our light a bit to get a bit more to get a bit more light on our Christmas balls. So they look a little bit better. Maybe this was a little bit too much. 150. Okay. Now we created nice Christmas balls. So let's duplicate all of these particles. Here. So the particle node, model node, material node, select all of them and press Ctrl D, duplicate these. And now we will create another set of Christmas balls. In this particle node here, I will just change the seed. So I can come in here and change the seed. Now I will make these a little bit smaller. So let's make these maybe eight. Maybe increase the randomness here a bit. And I want these to be also a sphere, so I do not have to change anything in the model node, but I want to change the material. So in this case, we do not need any diffuse color and I do not need a reflection color because I want to create these, uh, yeah, these bright balls here. So let's change the position of our light. It's not perfect here. It's a little bit too low. If I shift this up a little bit, then we get a bit more of an interesting reflection here. Okay, now let's take a look how we can create a custom 3D shape. To create a custom 3D shape, let's simply duplicate these again here and drag them out and link them to our emitter. And inside the particles now, I want to change the offset again or the, sh the shift seed. And now I will change the model from primitive to text and mask. And now we have to apply a mask here. And now I want to create snowflakes. And to create snowflakes, you can either, as I said, download the assets or the project file for this tutorial, but you can also create them on your own. I will quickly show you how to do that. Therefore, you can simply search for a snowflake texture on the internet. So if you go to Google and put in snowflake PNG, you will find a bunch of these. And uh, I already downloaded a few here. So I will choose, let's say this one for now. Yeah, I think that this is quite good. Let's import it. Now let's drag it on the composition icon to create a new composition and now I want to auto trace this layer and actually this has an alpha channel on it so I can choose layer auto trace and now I can trace the alpha channel and you see I have these settings here corner 50% tolerance 30 if you set this down to one then it will be accurate like so and we could blur this if we want let's say then it gets a little bit more round. Actually, I will do that because 
that's probably a bit better for the 3D extrusion. So let's do it. Let's click OK. And now I created a new layer. And this has now the shape of this snowflake. So let's copy this, Control C, the whole layer, and let's go to our main composition. And in here, I will just paste it in and I will put it right on the bottom here. We do not need to see it. And inside my model, where I specified the mask, text and mask, I can now choose a layer and I can now choose this auto trace snowflake. And you see what this does. It, it creates a total mess. But we will deal with that now. They're just a little bit too big and, and too, too far extruded. So first of all, let's set the pixel size down to 1. Um, this looks already a bit better. And now let's go to the model. And you see we have this. The extrusion depth is way too big. So it has an extrusion depth of 100. And I think that something like 3 would do. Now you see they are very thin now. But they also have a bevel applied. And I do not want the bevel here. So let's just change the bevel depth to 0. That will shrink down even more. And we can also... We can also change this to zero and you see now I have these these small actually they do not really look like they do not really look like snowflakes anymore they look like ninja stars so maybe I shouldn't have maybe I shouldn't have let me quickly correct this it looks a little bit strange so I don't want to have ninja stars I always wanted them as a child you know a child in the 90s I was really fascinated by ninjas but now we need snowflakes. So let's let's retrace this. And now I want to turn off the blur so to get this to get this bag. This looks way better. Copy. Sorry for that. Um, delete this. Paste it in. Make it invisible. Go to our model. And now specify it again. And I hope that this now looks a little bit better. Yeah, it really does. Okay, so now let's change the size of the model. And the size right now in the model properties right here is set to 100. It's too big, so let's set it to 50. I want these to be smaller. Well, this looks quite good. And now let's go to the particles here. And let's change the birth chance to a higher value, maybe 60. Let's see. How this looks like and oh, this looks quite good you see now we get a nice bunch of snowflake ninja stars here and now in the materials we want these to look like a little bit like gold and therefore we can change the color first of all and we can change the color to something like this let's take a look uh, looks better immediately and now we can, of course, also play around with the glossiness and with the reflection. And if I turn up the glossiness, this may get a little bit more interesting. And reflection, don't know yet, maybe a little bit higher. Let's take a look. Actually, it doesn't look too bad. They look quite nice, look quite shiny. What we can do now, and I think they're still a little bit too big. So let's go to the model and let's change the size to 40. And this looks a little bit better. And if we take a close look, you see that now this is this is looking OK, but it's not really looking cool because we have no shadows between these particles. And there is a feature that is very important that I should have told you before, but better late than never. So let's turn on the ambient occlusion inside our render settings here. So if you turn this on, you see that immediately the quality of this render improves. And it is a little bit harsh now, so I think we can turn this down. So let's turn the intensity down to maybe 50 so that we do not get so much dark areas. But you see that this slight shadow improves the overall look quite a bit. And if you want to brighten the 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 size of our 3D models that are not facing our light, then we can always come in here and add a new light. And in this case, you can use an ambient light. And with this ambient light, set it to about 20%. And now you see this will brighten up all the areas, no matter where the light. The light has no position, actually. This is an omni light that's everywhere. It's a little bit too strong, so I could now come in here and set it back to maybe 10%. But 
but you see that this just brightens up everything a little bit and I think it makes the overall look way nicer. Okay, so let's create a quick run preview and see what we have got here. Okay, so the render is finished. It lasted a few minutes, but actually for this it was very fast. And you see what we've got and you see that it looks really nice. And I want to give you one more hint. Uh, in the Stardust settings, render settings, you probably already saw it, there is this quality settings and you can change to medium, for example. And then the performance will increase but of course also the quality will be decreased and this can help when you are working maybe to improve performance or to just render out a quick preview and then you can of course always crank this up for your final render uh, one more hint if you want to improve the look of scenes like this it's always good to add more lights so whenever you have reflections and 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 uh, glossiness then lights are always the key to a better look if I now go to new and add a new light and again take a parallel spotlight and make this maybe let's say 100 for now maybe another color maybe give this a little bit of a bluish tint the classical orange blue thing you know and now we have to position this of course so let's go to the four views and I want this also to have a way bigger fall off distance so let's increase this until we get something from it like so it should work and let's see where this light now is if I put this in the background of my of my 3d let's see maybe maybe like so Okay, and turn it around. Now it is lighting our scene from the back here. And you see now I can bring it up here higher. And I can't see it anymore. Oh, here it is. Okay, now let's turn this down. And let's see whether this did anything. Yeah, and you see now we have this nice light coming in from the top and we could even and we could even make this a bit more intense. And now this is even more shiny. And I just wanted to show you that lights are the key to create awesome looks. And of course, all the material settings that I showed you. Okay, so this is it with the tutorial. Um, if you want to recreate exactly what you saw in the preview video, you can download the project of this preview video from superluminal.tv. If you do not have Stardust yet, I would recommend to jump over to their website, superluminal.tv, take a look. It's really awesome, as you saw. I thank you very much for watching and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye.